of the Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis. Book 3 of Interior Consolation. Chapter 7 of Concealing Grace in the Keeping of Humility. Son, it is more profitable for thee and safer to hide the grace of devotion and not to be elevated with it, nor to speak much of it, nor to consider it much, but rather to despise thyself the more, and to be afraid of it as being given to one unworthy. Thou must not cling too closely to this affection, which may be quickly changed into the contrary. When thou hast grace, think with thyself how miserable and poor thou art wont to be without grace. Nor does advancement in the spiritual life consist as much in having the grace of consolation as in bearing the withdrawal of it with humility, resignation, and patience, so as not to grow remiss in the earnestness of thy prayer at that time, nor suffer thine other wanted works to slip away altogether. But that thou willingly do what lies in thee according to the best of thy ability and understanding, and take care not to neglect thyself wholly through the dryness or anxiety of mind, which thou feelest. For there are many who, when things succeed not well with them, presently grow impatient or slothful. For the way of man is not always in his own power, but it belongs to God to give and to comfort when he wills, and as much as he wills, and whom he wills, as it shall please him, and no more. Some, wanting in caution, have ruined themselves by reason of the grace of devotion, because they were desirous of doing more than they could, not weighing well the measure of their own littleness, but following rather the inclinations of the heart than the dictates of reason. And because they presumptuously undertook greater things than were pleasing to God, therefore they quickly lost grace. They became needy and were left wretched, who had built themselves a nest in heaven, to the end that, being thus humbled and impoverished, they might learn not to soar on their own wings, but to cherish hope under mine. Those who are as yet new and inexperienced in the way of the Lord may be easily deceived and brought to ruin if they rule not themselves by the counsel of the discreet. But if they will rather follow their own judgment than believe others who have experience, their end will be full of peril, that is, if they still refuse to be withdrawn from their own conceits. They who are wise in their own eyes seldom humbly suffer themselves to be ruled by others. It is better to have a little knowledge with humility and small understanding than greater treasures of learning with a vain self-conceit. It is better for thee to have little than much, which may puff thee up with pride. He is not so discreet as he ought to be, who gives himself up wholly to gladness, forgetting his former poverty and the chaste fear of God, 
which fears to lose the grace which is offered. Nor has his wisdom enough of valor, who in a time of adversity and any distress bears himself with too much despair, and thinks and feels of me with less confidence than he ought. He who would fain be too secure in time of peace will often be found too much dejected and timid in time of war. If thou couldst always remain humble and little in thine own eyes, and keep thy spirit in due order and subjection, thou wouldst not fall so easily into danger and stumbling. It is a good counsel that, when thou hast received the spirit of fervor, thou shouldst meditate how it will be with thee when that light shall leave thee. When this shall happen, remember that the light may return again, which, for thy warning and my glory, I have withdrawn for a time. Such a trial is oftentimes more profitable than if thou wert always to have prosperity according to thy will. For the merits of a man are not to be estimated by his having many visions or consolations, nor by his being skilled in scripture, nor by his being set in a higher place, but by his being grounded in true humility and full of divine charity, by his always seeking purely and entirely the honor of God, by his esteeming himself as nothing, and sincerely despising himself, and being better pleased to be despised and humiliated by others than to be honored by them. And that concludes Chapter 7 of Book 3 of The Imitation of Christ.